Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talos of Tech live on Twitch for one of the last times. This is a historic stream. It's the last time I'm going to have a new haircut and be live on Twitch at the same time. Unless things on YouTube go horribly wrong and I, ends up and I end up bouncing back. But we have some news to talk about. And man, did this come out of left field. We were talking about iPhone 12 battery packs. When was it? Oh, let me, I just had it up. Okay, let me check real quick. Just because this is on my mind right now. MagSafe battery... I can search this up. It was February 7th. Wow, it was my birthday. How did I forget that? <laughs> okay, so on my 23rd birthday, I did a video about the MagSafe battery pack that was referenced within iOS 14 code um, way back in February. So we thought, okay, launch must be imminent. Maybe they're going to be at the March event, maybe the April event, somewhere in there. We're going to get some battery packs. Um Obviously didn't happen to the point that Apple waited until everyone had just just about given up hope entirely. And there was no more uh, thought process that we would get a battery pack. Because why would Apple release an iPhone 12 accessory just a couple months before new iPhones came out? Well, um, the reason being because this battery pack, it does work with all iPhone 12s, one size fits all. And it will most likely work with the iPhone 13 and 14 and 15 most likely, um, which means we have a pretty decent uh, product on our hands. An, an iPhone accessory that will last you several generations instead of just one. Um, that's why I prefer it over a battery case, which is neat. Offers some protective wear if you care about it, but overall it makes it very hard to upgrade your iPhone in the future because now you got to buy a whole new battery case and your old battery case becomes worthless pretty quick. Um and the most fascinating thing apart uh, apart from the the modularity of it, the fact that you can use it across multiple different iPhones, is the fact that iPhone 12, this device right here, had a hardware feature all along that Apple decided to keep quiet and decided to keep disabled, which is reverse wireless charging. And, man, like, it's crazy to think my 12 mini has had this all along and I had no clue... Apple kept it on, under wraps, and they didn't let anybody know about it. And they saved that hardware all the way up until July just for this accessory. And that's it. So because of that, um, this device is actually capable of charging this device, but it is simply limited via software. If I wanted to, I'd be able to drop these on here and let the wireless charging coil emit power to the AirPods case, but it won't um, because Apple has decided that feature is not worth it for whatever reason. Um, but the question I wanted to speculate on was whether or not you'll be able to charge the MagSafe pack itself with another wireless charger or with even a MagSafe puck. As far as we know right now, as much as Apple is talking about, you can only charge that puck via a lightning cable or through reverse wireless charging of the iPhone. So, yes, you can charge a battery pack wirelessly, but as far as Apple is acknowledging, it's only through the back of the iPhone. So the speculation people are going on with this morning is whether or not the outside of that pack... This might be easier if I have a reference. I see your donations. I'll get to them in a second. Let me just rant for a minute. Um, so here's the, the back of the pack, and then here's what the side that clips onto the iPhone looks like. This side of the pack has to have uh, not just a, a way to give a wireless charge, but also receive one. According to Apple's documents saying that the iPhone will, will reverse wirelessly charge. Basically, if you slap the battery pack on the back of your iPhone, and then you plug a lightning cable into your iPhone, right? Not the pack. We're not talking about plugging into the pack. If you plug in a lightning cable to your iPhone while the pack is on it, the iPhone 12 will emit a charge from the back and charge the pack wirelessly, which means there has to be an inductive receiver in here, which is why some people are thinking you'll be able to take a MagSafe puck like this one, like I have on my desk, and slap that on this side of the uh, pack and be able to charge it inductively because the, the main reason this is a big deal for me in case people are wondering why I'm harping on the can the, the pack be charged inductively or not is because I don't want to have another lightning cable sitting around, right? I hardly ever use lightning cables now because um, I can charge my iPhone 12 via MagSafe. 
um, and I can charge my Apple Watch with MagSafe Duo. Um, so if I was able to, if I had to keep around a lightning cable just for the MagSafe pack, or the only way to charge the pack was to plug a lightning cable into my iPhone, and then the iPhone has to reverse wireless charge the pack, that's just another cable I'm going to have to keep around. I'm already having to keep a USB-C cable around for my iPad, and once every six weeks I'll dig out a lightning cable for my Magic Mouse and Magic Keyboard, but even that I'm not happy with. So having to keep another lightning cable around just for the MagSafe pack, that's going to annoy me. That could actually end up being a deal breaker for me if it does support it at all. Um, I'm pretty confident that the, um, the the because Apple hasn't talked about this, I'm pretty sure you won't be able to charge it inductively on this side. Even though like physically I don't see anything wrong with that, you know, if if it's that's the that's the size and shape of a MagSafe puck right there. So theoretically speaking it wouldn't be terribly difficult to just put the metal ring on the outside here so that if you wanted to charge the magsafe uh pack with a magsafe if you wanted to charge the pack with a puck could you <laughs> um because apple's not talking about that and no one has made reference to that in any of the articles i've read i'm assuming the answer is no but i would be willing to compromise if i could charge the pack with a puck here. If I could just slap a MagSafe puck here, I don't really know of a good reason to not allow that. If it's able to receive a wireless charge from the iPhone, um, which Apple has confirmed that is a thing, why couldn't the puck charge that inductively? I don't know. Uh, but it might end up being one of those stupid things. I'm not sure. But um, 100 bits from Chris Norton, thank you, says... Uh, Hello to you on Twitch. Are you going to bring your dance intro back? The reason I haven't brought the dance intro back is because of the music. Um, Twitch used to be not so strict about copyright uh, of music or videos. That's why we used to be able to react to live streams on Twitch. And now they have gotten hit with the same law legal issues that YouTube has been hit with. So I would still struggle with the same copyright problems on YouTube as I do here. So essentially I'm waiting... Or, or trying to find... I'm not looking very hard, to be honest with you, because it's not a huge deal, but I need to find some good dance music that I really could rock hard to that also is royalty-free, that I won't get copyright claimed or striked for, and I have yet to find music that I like that is also copyright-free. Um, so until I find that, unfortunately, I cannot bring uh, the, the dancing countdown back. But also on YouTube, I'm able to schedule streams... So I'm planning, actually, when I switch to YouTube on there not being a countdown at all. I'm just going to schedule a stream probably five or ten minutes before it begins. It's already going to have a thumbnail and a title and everything. And I'm just going to say, you know, going live in ten minutes. And uh, people will be in the chat, you know, getting their questions ready, getting the subjects ready. And then I'll just go live at the scheduled time. So there's probably not really need for even a countdown on YouTube. Uh, at all. Um, but if I find one I really like, I might do it. Kiopsis, 25 bits, thank you, says, Drew, my lad, I think I'm shadow banned or something on YouTube. I couldn't send you super chats and all my messages seem to be invisible. That's weird. Are, are you talking on the tech channel? I'll have to dig into the settings there. <sighs> I don't know why you're shadow banned. I don't remember shadow banning. But um, I'll, I'll go into that later. DM me, uh, DM me on... Uh, you know how to reach me, Kiopsis. I'll I'll try to do that before we switch to YouTube. Um, let's see. You should be able to charge it with a MagSafe puck if the iPhone can charge it, but you'd have to take it off the phone. I'm fine with that because, honestly, I do not plan. As long as my iPhone 12 mini has a decent amount of charge, I don't actually plan on keeping the puck on there. This, is, this might be an individual use case that not a lot of people... Uh, fall into but i love the way my iphone 12 mini feels like it's a great weight it's a great size and i don't want the pack to be on there constantly but that's why i'm so excited for the magsafe pack is it goes in it goes on and off really easily and simply so if i when i'm just around the house if i'm just out and about um, not out and about in and about <laughs> if i'm just walking around to the living room to the bedroom to my kitchen if I'm just walking around here, I don't need the MagSafe pack, okay? I've got a wireless charger on my desk. Um, also, if I'm on Wi-Fi and I'm at home, I probably have my Mac. I have my iPad. My my 12 mini is not going to need a battery 
boost. The only time I'm probably going to use the the MagSafe pack is if I'm on a trip using navigation a lot on 5G a lot or on cellular. That's what really sucks down the battery. Because when I was on my camping trip and doing a time lapse, basically I, I a couple of weeks ago went camping and we were in an area where there was absolutely no service on any carrier, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, none of them had service. And so I just turned on airplane mode. And my 12 mini battery life was actually really good. I'll be I'll be honest. We we turned on the time lapse mode to capture a sunrise, and it was probably going for like two hours or two and a half hours. It had only dropped like 10, 15 percent battery. I was really really impressed, and I think it's all just because cellular and and 5G and that type of thing just eats through your battery more than anything. And most of the time, that's what you're using when you're out and about, away from Wi-Fi, away from home. That's what really sucks up the 12 mini battery quickly. Um, so if I'm out and about, I just will have the battery pack in my pocket, or I will have it in my in my car, or have it in my backpack, or, or whatever, or I'll leave it in my wife's purse or something. Use my 12 mini until the battery gets really, really low, and if it gets down to you know 20% or less, then I can pull out the pack, slap it on the back, and charge it all the way up again. So even if I just have to take the battery pack off my iPhone to charge it with the MagSafe puck, that's not a deal breaker to me because if I'm at home and I'm just at my desk or whatever, I don't I don't need the, the pack to be attached to the 12 mini and charging. In fact, my 12 mini rarely comes in here, to be honest, because I have an iPad and an iMac, and the Apple ecosystem is amazing. Um, so I can text people and I can go on maps and I can check my calendar and everything from my pre-existing Apple devices. So my 12 mini rarely comes in here. So as long as I have the battery pack, like easily able to drop on a Qi charger, or I can drop it on MagSafe duo and have it charge up, obviously it would be nice if I could charge up both at the same time, but I could see Apple thinking that's too inefficient because you have an inductive charge method slapped onto a battery pack that is also giving off an inductive charge method. So there would be a lot of energy lost. Maybe Apple cares about that, or maybe it's just going to make the battery pack too hot to be receiving a wireless charge and giving one simultaneously. Maybe that's too much. I don't know, but I'm just excited that there's a battery pack that I could use for several generations of iPhone. Honestly, I have a hard time understanding a future where this pack will not work on a future iPhone, right? Short of Apple just literally software limiting it, right? Could they do that? I, I mean, they could. Will they, though, is another question. I mean, Apple likes to give long-term support to stuff, you know? They're, they're still giving the iPad Air 2 software updates, and they're still giving the iPhone 6S, iOS 15, even as old as that. That, that phone still has a headphone jack, and Apple's providing software updates for it. So I don't really see a future where Apple would just decide this MagSafe battery pack no longer works on this generation of iPhone just because we said so. We're going to turn it off via software from working. Um, I guess, yeah, they could make a MagSafe 2 with a significantly different sized coil. But even that's a stretch in my opinion because... Looking at how the most common size for iPhones and smartphones in general has been around a 6-inch screen. That's what iPhone XR sold amazing, 11 sold amazing, iPhone 12 and 12 Pro sold away amazing. So they seem to have a pretty solid size of rectangular device that people are comfortable with. And I don't see them changing much from the 15-watt uh, wireless charger. They could make that faster and still retain the same uh, inductive coil that the magsafe size i could see staying the same so i don't see a bunch of standards changing with magsafe in the future to be honest with you um mike actually hit 12 months of twitch prime at least i hit a year before the uh telos of twitch exodus happy one year anniversary <laughs> thanks mike appreciate that actually that's what we were waiting for i wanted to switch to youtube like a year ago but then once mike started twitch priming i was like oh we better stay on twitch until he reaches a year but thank you that's a joke, by the way. Keopsis donated a quarter. He says, I just got a new phone about a week ago. You mentioned uh, I left my old phone on and the battery's at 15%. Amazing how much battery gets eaten by 5G. Oh, yeah. Not just 5G, but LTE in general. Like, I used to just flat out turn off 5G on my phone. 
because I hate 5G still, and I'm not sure why I haven't turned it back off. I guess I'm just lazy, and I haven't gone into the settings to do it. But pretty much any time LTE or 5G doesn't seem to make a huge difference with the 12 Mini, it will chew through battery so quickly if I'm not on Wi-Fi. If I'm at home and I'm just watching YouTube videos in the living room or the bedroom or whatever, and I'm just doing basic stuff with it, it's not a big deal. Even videos and pictures aren't really that big a deal with the 12 Mini. It's just cellular. And that's what Nick from the podcast has discovered as well. His his battery life on the 12 Mini, he says, is just getting to the point of unusable um, because he lives in a place where his Wi-Fi sucks because he lives in a really rural area. He's waiting for Starlink. Um, I hope Starlink can get to Nick as soon as possible. Um, but his Wi-Fi is so bad that he ends up using a lot of data straight from his phone's hotspot and using cellular on his phone all the time. And that's where he's seeing the 12 Mini really, really suffer, is anytime you're using LTE a lot. Um, so he's buying some battery packs, I believe. And I'm very curious to hear what he thinks of the MagSafe battery pack, uh, just because... It's so cool that there's an iPhone accessory that we're getting next week that I'll be able to use on this phone and on my next iPhone, um, which is sweet. Um, let's see. If they break MagSafe via software updates, I guess they will have a good reason for a bunch of people to jailbreak. Unlikely to happen, though. I'm not sure if that can be fixed via jailbreak, because that's my other question. I don't care about jailbreaking just because all of the features I've seen on jailbreak are not a big enough difference to me to to be worth all the effort of downloading everything and, and risking the software and not wanting it to turn off and everything. You're not going to convince me. I've, I've seen the videos. I've gotten the questions a million times. I know, I, I know there's a lot of jailbreak fans out there. You're not going to convince me. Okay. But here's a jailbreak question I have for the audience. If the iPhone 12 has physically had the hardware to give off a wireless charge to another device, which we now know it does because of um, the the B B MagSafe battery pack. Why couldn't anyone in the jailbreak community force unlock it themselves? My guess is because there's a certain fundamental iOS control that even if you jailbreak and, and rip open the software and start making it do whatever you want, even that is still deactivated because... We didn't know this reverse wireless charging thing could be a thing, and via jailbreak, no one's been able to turn it on. So I think just as much Apple would be able to lock it down again and make it not work in the future. Um, it's not that they can't, it's that they don't know how. That's, fu I <laughs> that's funny if that's the truth, because I refuse to believe that there's just someone who hasn't had the time. People come up with all kinds of weird jailbreak things. Um, let's see. I'm not a fan of the battery pack. Only charges the phone at 5 watts, and you can't charge the battery via MagSafe or MagSafe Duo. Well, we don't know that yet. Um, we think that the... We know for a fact the MagSafe pack will be able to receive a charge from the iPhone. So I don't think that the iPhone has some type of inductive charging that the MagSafe puck doesn't have. Um, it can charge the phone at 15 watts if the pack is plugged in. The reason I'm not bothered by the 5 watt charge rate is because it's a convenient charge rate. You can literally put the phone in your pocket, you can use the phone, you can take it wherever you go. So, convenient charging is okay to be slow in my opinion. That's the same thing with Tesla's. Like I don't mind that if you're at home they don't charge very quickly because it's convenient. That's where the car is going to be anyway. So if the car is just going to be sitting in my garage while I'm asleep at night, I don't mind that the charge rate is slow because it's convenient. Same thing with the pack. You slap it on there. You don't even have to fuss around with a case and trying to slide it in the battery case just right. No, you just slap it on the back. Man, my wedding ring just slapped that 12 mini really hard. But thank, thank that ceramic shield. It's really, <laughs> it's really solid. Um, I don't mind that it's a 5-watt charge rate because it's going to be on the phone for extended periods of time. So I don't. I would actually rather it not be a fast charge, even if it could charge fast, um, just because you don't want your iPhone 15 watt fast charging all day, nonstop. That would be weird. It's impossible to activate reverse wireless charging at all, even through jailbreaking. Aha! I assumed so. I don't think it was a lack of time. Isn't ceramic shield only on the front? No, I thought it was only on the back, honestly, or one or the other. Either way, I don't see a scratch. I was looking because I slapped this thing really hard and I'm holding it up to the light. It's fine. I don't see any scuffs. 
so we're good. Um, let's see. It's yeah. It can it can give a fifteen watt charge rate if it's plugged in. So basically, you can treat the MagSafe puck like it's it's a lightning to MagSafe adapter, if you will. Although I believe it will only work if you have a lightning cable coming from like a twenty watt brick. I I doubt it'll work if you plug in a five watt brick lightning cable into the MagSafe puck. Uh, that's gonna lose too much energy. It'll probably charge slower than five watt. Um, Ceramic shield is only twice as strong on the back, but it's still there. There you go. Um, let's see. There is a way, but you'd have to develop your own software for almost everything, including the firmware, which is nearly impossible. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just say it's impossible. I th I think there's a there's a core th there's a core fundamental lock at the bottom that not even jailbreaks can unlock. Um, let's see. Uh, jailbreak tweaks pretty much just hook into existing functions and modify or add on to them. Yeah, there's there's little things I've seen that are kind of nifty, but nothing worth the trouble. I'm <laughs> all of the work. It, uh, you download this thing and then reboot. And then it, if a software update comes out, don't get that new update because then it'll break this. And I'm just not that type of person. I don't care. The website says higher than 20 watts, which I also find confusing because it makes it sound like the 20 watt charger won't work. I don't think so. I think you're getting confused, Scott. Let me let me break down what the website is saying. I think I thought it was pretty simple. All right. Can I blow up this text here? All right. Um okay. At your desk and need a charge, just plug a lightning cable into the battery pack for up to 15 watts of wireless charging, which means that if if you have a 20 watt supported lightning cable, which I'm sure that's what it is because that's what MagSafe needs to get the full 15 watts. That's, that's yeah, recommended 20 watt or higher. It's right there. And um, if, if you're at a desk, you just plug in a 20 watt lightning cable to the pack and now it charges your iPhone at 15 watts wirelessly. So just as fast as the normal MagSafe puck. But if you're short on time, you can use a power adapter higher than 20 watts. And now... It's going to charge um, the pack at a faster rate. Whereas I think I could be misinterpreting this, but I believe if you just plug in a lightning cable at 20 watts to the pack and the pack is attached to the iPhone, then it'll charge the iPhone at 15 watts and the pack itself won't charge much at all. I don't. You, you'll see the percentage of your iPhone go up, but the pack will pretty much stay the same until the iPhone is fully charged or mostly charged, and then the pack will start to trickle up a charge. Whereas if you plug in a lightning cable above 20 watts, that's when you'll start to see the iPhone go up at 15 watt charge rate and the pack go up at a decent rate. I don't know if it'll be 15 watts or something, but probably pretty high. Although I don't know how many people have power adapters uh, with lightning that are higher than 20 watt. I guess some people might have some old iPad Pros sitting around with uh you know plugging in a lightning cable to their 30 watt brick or their 60 watt brick i don't do that i don't have that um doesn't make a huge difference to me but oh i guess you guys don't need to see that um let's see i always stream for about an hour yeah that's the usual i'm very confused by the whole battery pack honestly I get that it's a little bit confusing, but overall, I think it's a cool product. Like, of all iPhone accessories, this is probably my favorite one. Although, I was thinking on my drive... I just got back from the dentist, by the way. On my drive back from the dentist, I was brainstorming about the battery pack and how excited I am. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal. I know, it's probably really easy to simplify it and people just be like, Drew, it's a battery pack, who cares? But I'm like, Apple, you son of a female dog you know <laughs> i was like you had reverse wireless charging all along and you didn't tell anyone you know i was just my mind was blown by that and also i'm like but yeah if it can receive a wireless charge from the iphone shouldn't you be able to slap a magsafe puck to the front of it and it would charge that way like come on um but simultaneously that the fact that you can use it on future generation iphones gets me excited I get that the, the charge rate is a little bit confusing because it's saying that, yo, if you have a f higher than 20 watt, it'll charge even faster. I'm like, okay, we know that it's not going to wirelessly charge the iPhone faster than 15 watts, right? That's 
That's a given. Um, but aside from that, uh, the the rate at which the pack charges, I guess, is just higher. But I think that's a pretty niche market. I don't think that'll happen very often anyway. Uh, how many teeth did they pull slash drill into? No, it was just a general checkup. It's a good idea to go to the dentist about twice a year. So this was my uh, first time for a while. But, yeah, they just cleaned up. They, they said my gums looked really nice. Um, no, no teeth to be pulled or anything like that. Um, that's my biggest issue with it is that is they don't say if you can charge it with MagSafe, it would be so convenient to just leave it on MagSafe Duo and then grab it when needed. I think it will. I'm going to honestly, I'm going to be very surprised if you can't that will, I think uh, I'm still brainstorming here. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not because I have a feeling the 13 Pro Max that I plan on getting in a couple months is probably going to have an insanely good battery life, and it probably won't need the pack really anyway. But even if it gave it like a 50% charge rate, that would be kind of cool. If I was in a pinch or if I was on a, a trip and I was far away from a charger for an extended period of time, having all of the battery life of the 13 Pro Max, and then even when that gets low, I can pull out my MagSafe pack and give it an extra charge that's pretty dope um but if i have to keep a lightning cable around just for that pack then yeah it's going to be a no-go for me because i'm like you scott i want to be able to throw it on the magsafe duo and i have the magsafe puck on my desk because i believe that's the future that's how i charge my airpods and i do believe eventually not this year but eventually apple will get rid of the lightning port and magsafe is going to be the only way to charge it for the most part and I want to be ready for that MagSafe wireless future. Um, so if this thing is making me keep around a lightning cable, I'm going to be kind of bummed and annoyed. Um, it will just have a four-day battery with the pack. Yeah, Grant, that would be amazing if you could just last four days with the pack. Um, if it did, though, they'd probably say so in all the support documentation. Yeah, I'm confused why it's not saying that. But... It just makes no sense to me as to how it wouldn't, given it can receive a wireless charge, right? MagSafe uses lightning, though? Uh, not necessarily. The MagSafe pucks have USB-C on the other end. Also, F for the camera button. Yeah, they got rid of the camera button on this one. I guess it's not a battery case for the record, so it's not. they didn't necessarily get rid of it, but it just, you know. We're talking pack now. We're no longer in battery case territory. Hey, hey, in a babu frick way. <laughs> what? Andrew, what does that mean? Just rewatched Rise of... Oh, babu frick! That's from Rise of Skywalker. I forgot. I thought there was just some weird sussy baka meme I was out of. Every time you say that, it's hilarious. Every time you say sussy baka, people are like, oh, He said it! Clip that and upload it everywhere! I'm like, okay. You guys make me feel all special. Thanks. Um, let's see. Do you think Apple will adopt Bitcoin for Apple Pay and Wallet? I don't know. I. It feels weird that they haven't done much on it lately. I believe there was some job posting that they like hired someone. That they like hired someone that specialized in cryptocurrency recently. So I'm sure they've got their eyes on it, but they've definitely made no like progress with it or anything. You know, Tesla bought a bunch of Bitcoin, um, which was like a big deal, I guess, because it was the first time like a, a company in the S&P 500 was holding billions worth of Bitcoin. And a lot of people were kind of watching that to see how it goes. And I think Apple, at least Apple now in the Tim Cook era is uh is being very safe is being very cautionary with everything you know they don't want to do anything too drastic you know they want to do a lot of market research on what features people care about and a lot of sample tim cook is a marketing and, and financial genius by the way i know that he does a lot of things people get annoyed by and people get sick of him from certain things but financially look at the stock price since tim cook took over and look at iphone sales and iPad sales, and services sales, and wearable sales. <laughs> Look at how Apple's performed financially ever since Tim Cook took over. He knows a lot. He's a very smart guy, 
and he plays things very safe because he knows how to prioritize revenue and income and profit margins and everything. And the guy's a genius, okay? I think they picked a great guy for post-Steve Jobs Apple. The Apple was no longer in startup territory when Steve Jobs left. He was no longer, Apple was no longer about trying to do something weird, do something drastic like Samsung always tries to do. They take a lot of risks on foldables and take a lot of risks on unproven technology, trying to get 5G out there really quick or trying to get OLED out there real quick. Um, to, uh, Apple's not really rushing to be first to anything anymore. Um, not that they really uh, were at any point. It's not like they invented most things. They, they streamlined most things. I think that the invention doesn't really matter as much as, as the, the streamline process, right? You know, Tesla did not invent the electric car, but I think they will be the biggest electric car maker because they found a way to streamline it and make it accessible to everyday people. Same thing. Apple didn't invent touchscreens, but they streamlined them and made them really popular. They, they didn't invent wireless headphones, but they streamlined them. They didn't invent smartwatches either. There's all kinds of things that Apple is the dominant maker of that they're the biggest in the world of but they didn't invent most of those categories and i don't say that as a drawback some people brag about it. They, you, you, they didn't invent that you know it's like inventing it is just one step of the process of making it change the world you know like inventing something oftentimes isn't what gets you famous or uh, it's it's who have, who's able to streamline something Model T wasn't the first car, but it mainstreamed automotive production, turned it into something everyday people would buy. So I think there's a lot of undue, uh, overdue credit in the streamlined division. And I think cryptocurrency is still relatively new to the finance market. I know some people, oh, it's 10 years ago. In the finance world, that's still relatively new in the, in the age of... Um, uh, stock markets or index funds or, or ways to store value. It's still finding its mainstream course uh, into the point of, uh, you know, a lot of different brokerage services like like uh, Vanguard or even PayPal now is letting people buy Bitcoin, but they don't actually own it. So it's like we're bringing crypto purchases to more people, but not really because they don't actually own it. You know, they, you own the right to that, but you can't actually wire cryptocurrency if you bought it on Robinhood or, or PayPal or anything. You just can buy it and hold it and treat it like a stock, basically. Um, or you can sell it. Um, so it's still, I think, in its infancy, and there's still probably a lot of untested grounds that Apple's watching about whether or not it's a good idea to hold much of their cash in, in crypto. And once they have a long-term plan with it, and once they have an idea of what to do with crypto, they'll they'll probably act on it. And the fact that they haven't yet points to me that they're they're just watching. They're just curious. They're gonna, they're going to see how Tesla's crypto purchase goes. They're going to see how Robinhood and all these other brokerage services that are letting people buy crypto. Let's see how this works out because there's still a chance of the governments getting involved more and more and and starting to say. Um, uh, starting to say you can't accept certain types of crypto or that's you know too much market manipulation and i know that crypto is kind of not backed by anything so you could still do it underground but i'm just saying if governments say that businesses aren't allowed to support it then that's obviously going to tank the value of it a lot um if all you can do is buy it and hold it and send it to your friends and stuff but you can't actually exchange goods and services with it there's all kinds of untested ground with crypto um it's fairly complicated. It's very complex, as uh, very complex as. <laughs> uh, but I, I think Apple's just going to take their time with it. They're not going to rush into it. Um, but I agree, yeah, if Apple bought a bunch of Bitcoin, the price would explode. And they're probably aware of that. Square and all these financial companies are adopting crypto, so I think Apple will probably have to adopt it sometime. Yeah, there's some are, but... There's, you know, Apple cares about the environment too, which is partially why Tesla uh, backed out on uh, accepting Bitcoin was because they realized that a lot of it was mined uh, without renewable energy and that it was hitting a lot of, uh, it was consuming a lot of power to mine Bitcoin and that kind of thing. So that's not exactly in Apple's best interest either. Um, 
I get that traditional currency isn't good for the environment either, and there's a, there's a whole discussion to be had there. I'm just saying I could I could see why Apple's not super eager to jump onto crypto right away. Um, <laughs> Andrew says I still don't understand crypto. The idea is to confuse everyone out of their money. Okay, you just you keep rambling and rambling until you've taken everyone's money and then you run off with it. As Elon said, it's a scam. <laughs> on snl um crypto is pretty much a gamble so that's why it's not mainstream yet well it's just very volatile is the thing i mean it's it's very uh all over the place and it can be manipulated very easily um i i always thought it was interesting that a lot of people with crypto seem to be impressed that it's not backed by a bank it's not backed by a government you know it's an internet currency that's accessible to everyone and it's not you don't have to it's not centralized but at the same time it seems like a very small number of people can influence the stock price a lot so we're taking the value of the currency away from you know being able to be fluctuated from governments and the uh what's it called oh i know this where do they print the money federal reserve that's what it was instead of your uh, value of the dollar being influenced by the government or the federal reserve or the banks now it's influenced by elon musk's twitter account <laughs> and uh whether or not a, a multi-billion dollar corporation wants to buy a bunch because if apple decides hey we're gonna buy 10 billion in bitcoin that's gonna shoot it way up and if another currency says if another big company says actually we're gonna stop supporting crypto because we found this crypt other cryptocurrency, which is way better, and we're going to support that. So that sends that altcoin soaring, and it sends Bitcoin falling because Bitcoin consumes too much power, and that's too dirty. And if Elon Musk decides to tweet something bad about Bitcoin, then the value of it tanks. <laughs> so I'm, I just, I have a little bit in Bitcoin, not much, uh, not anything I would care about. If Bitcoin went to zero, I'd be fine. I didn't put a meaningful amount of money in. Um, so... That's why I'm like, yeah, it's decentralized, but you're kind of putting all the power in other people's hand, and it's still going to be a lot more volatile that way. Um, yeah, talk about deregulated and decentralized. Elon's tweets. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with Doge. Bizarrely, Doge and Bitcoin are... are they perform somewhat similarly to Tesla stock, which is a little weird. <laughs> Not many more new crypto coins will succeed, in my opinion. I don't know why their pump and dump will peep, keep uh, peep, will dump people keep doing it because it won't last long. I don't know. They always say that. It's like, oh, no, just, it, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the main ones. None of these other cryptos. And then Doge comes along and everyone's like, Doge is the future, actually, because it's a joke. Am I the only one who didn't find it very funny? Like, they started it as a joke. That's what every person who starts like a currency thing as a joke is thinking. Anybody who starts a joke like that, let's start it as a joke. Yeah, the, in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, yeah, but if this blew up, that would be amazing. Can you imagine if it exploded? That's what, that's what everyone is thinking the whole time. Also, it's not that funny. I, I've seen Doge in memes that are funny, but just Doge for the sake of Doge is not that funny. Like, it's just a dog. Okay, it's a cute dog. Anything else? It, it, I don't know. There's a, some other currency comes along and they say this one's way more environmentally friendly and it can adjust with inflation. This currency's way, way better. So once a couple companies pick up on that one, they go, okay, actually we're going all in on this currency. We're dumping Bitcoin. So if a major corporation decides to dump it, or even better, make their own coin, knowing Apple and how much they want to control something, even Elon Musk was speculating on Twitter that it might make more sense for them to develop their own currency. Um, he didn't say that was for sure going to happen. He just talked about that. He was like, Bitcoin has its own set of issues. So what if Tesla made their own coin and used the excess energy of Tesla power walls to mine and have your Tesla with the full self-driving computer mine crypto when it wasn't being used? <sighs> you know, it's, Tesla makes their own cryptocurrency and then all the tesla fanboys and the tesla fans all dump their doge and bitcoin and go all in on tesla coin and then apple's like well that seemed to work for tesla let's make our own coin and 
then I could see the government seeing this is too crazy and getting involved and saying, okay, you can't all, we can't have every trillion dollar corporation making their own currency. That's not going to work. Um, so it's just, there's so many different ways it could go, you know? That's why I think Apple's so hesitant. Is Apple Pay Cash a currency? No. That is a method of payment, but it is still based on the U.S. dollar. That's a debit card, basically, yeah. Um, Nano is very environmentally friendly and lightning fast. It's really prime. There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Just as soon as everyone gets invested into one currency, another one comes along and everyone switches to that. So I think the altcoin side of things is what confuses most people. They're just like, wait, you can have an infinite number of different currencies? What's the difference? Oh, this one there's a finite amount of. This one there's an infinite amount of. This one uses more electricity than the other. What? You know, I, I completely understand why. I I personally... Yeah, this is, this is another rant we're going to get into. I, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, do I have the the energy to get into this discussion? Basically... I don't think within my lifetime everything's going to be crypto. I don't think everybody's going to switch to it. Um, I think that it's too volatile. And a lot of people brag about how it's not backed by anything, but I look at that as more of a downgrade. People don't want to hold the majority of their value into things that change so frequently. And we already don't like how the government and the Federal Reserve changes the value of our dollar, but the value of it changes even with stimulus checks and in, in not hyperinflation. Sorry, I won't say that. But it, even with inflation, people don't like the, the amount of fluctuation it does, but it's stable enough and supported enough that you can use the U.S. dollar in several countries, I believe, and you can you can know when you get paid from your employer, from your job, that that currency has value. You can take it to a grocery store and spend it. Um, and personally, when you have a large society of hundreds of millions of people all working and trying to exchange value, I do believe that you want that to be backed by a large, powerful entity. I don't believe you want everyone's currency on the planet to be backed by, you know, billion-dollar corporations and Elon Musk's Twitter. <laughs> and the, the fact that alt coin makes so many different currency options out there um it's 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 too complicated the digital wallet thing doesn't help you know i i know that us techies can get into it and we can get used to having a digital wallet with a digital code and and keeping track of i have 0. 0.000034 bitcoin how much is this apple oh that's 0. 0.000004 you know in the the price of it fluctuating so much um imagine trying to get your grandma on that standard because that's what we talk about in the future when we have everybody adopting a certain standard it has to be relatively simple and easy to understand and easy for the transactions to take place and i could see the u.s dollar being more digitized to the point that we don't necessarily need a, a physical presence of of cash anymore but i don't think that means it has to be crypto um I think that uh, we could get away from having physical coins and dollars, but still have a U.S. dollar. It's just in a digital sense and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's not going to work very well to have a, a unit of currency worth tens of thousands. And probably in another 10 years, it'll be in the hundreds of thousands. So that's not going to work. <laughs> um, so now you're going to have Bitcoin cash. So you're going to buy Bitcoin and then also divert that into a different currency. And then there's also a way better currency everyone should switch to. Is just a, the price of Bitcoin stuff is a meme. <laughs> yeah, I've seen those too. How much is this bread? Oh, it's only 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to work. I think that the majority of people investing in crypto are treating it as a stock. I think it, it's going to be great as a backup option for a lot of countries that have suffered from hyperinflation where the, the currency of their own government is not stable enough, so they just fall back on something else. It's a good plan B. I don't think crypto is going away. I, I don't even think necessarily the government will ban it, um, although I won't say that's impossible. Uh, there's also a lot of different governments that have different opinions on it. So that it's not like the U.S. government makes or breaks it. There could be other governments that say it's okay or not okay. Um, 
But I think that that traditional currency that you know just one dollar you know from the made from the Federal Reserve or just endorsed by the Federal Reserve at least. Uh, like I don't think in the future we'll need to keep around physical bills or, or coins. But I don't think that means everything has to move towards crypto. It'll still just be U.S. dollars with bank accounts. Maybe we only have fairly high bills in the future. Like the only cash is in fives and hundreds. You know, it's not ones sitting around anymore. Um, I think Tesla will let people mine with excess energy. Crypto mining equals exchanging energy for money. Tesla is an energy collecting and storage company. Just a moonshot. You've been watching Hyperchange, haven't you? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But uh, don't forget cash-only business, even allegedly Ill illicit ones. Yeah. Crypto is probably good for cash-only businesses, though, because they can do all that off the books and off the record and some of that. Um, some governments are adopting it as an official currency, but not not huge ones, I'd say. Um Crypto is like gold. No one buys it to actually use, just sell it back and make a profit. I think that's what it is for most people. I do believe there's some people that actually buy it and hold on to it, expecting to actually buy goods and services with it because they think in the future it will be a currency. But most of the long-term Bitcoin holders I know of, it's like if, if you believe that currency will go up in value over time and it'll become more and more valuable, why would you ever buy things with it? You know, would you trade your Apple stock for an iPhone? No, because you believe that that uh, you you believe that that stock will go up in value over time, and you believe that that share in Apple will be worth a heck of a lot more in the future than it is today. So there there's different ways of storing wealth, and I think crypto will continue to be one of them. But it it will be more looked at as an alternative to stocks or or gold not so much as an alternative actual currency that we all start using and accepting everywhere just because it's too complicated. And the U.S. government acts very slowly. They're probably not going to get rid of physical cash anytime soon. Um, and some people do really like that. They love cash in hand, no record. But I keep hearing that crypto or blockchain is traceable. Why have I also heard it isn't? That's we're back on the subject of confusing people out of their money. <laughs> Basically, there are ways to wire crypto in a way that's very hard to track, but ultimately it still can be tracked. But yeah, it's, there's no easy answers with crypto. That's why that's why I joke that it's it's all about just confusing people out of their money. It definitely feels weird that anytime you talk to someone about crypto, basically the end result is you should buy some, that way mine is worth more. That very quickly makes it feel like a pyramid scheme. I don't think it necessarily is, but it comes off that way. I, I don't personally believe that cryptocurrencies are, are a pyramid scheme, but they they certainly have a lot of similarities. I'll say that. I'll say <laughs> I, like, I like what Mark Sequence is saying. He's like, I've heard it is traceable, but it also isn't. And everyone says... It blockchain isn't traceable, and then he flips over Monopoly game board <laughs> out of confusion. It's that one meme of the guy hitting the desk and walking out of the room. <laughs> Come on. Why do people have a hard time understanding what manufacturing is? There are some people that say that Apple did nothing for the M1 chip. TSMC, TSMC created the chip, and Apple just slapped their logo on it. Same thing with Samsung. People say Apple is nothing without Samsung because they created the display. Uh, I don't think people have a hard time understanding what manufacturing is, but TSMC did not design the chip. There's a big difference between designing something and mass producing something, especially with Apple. Um, there's a lot of uh, steps that go into designing a chip or designing a display to work a certain way. You notice the Galaxy S8 had a lot of OLED burn-in issues, and the iPhone 10 did not. Samsung mass produced both those displays, but one of them was designed better than the other so apple comes in and says you know this is how you build it we want your factories and your employees to make this for us but using our design that we came up with that's the difference so apple designed the m1 chip that's why no one else had it if it was just a matter of tsmc created it and anybody could access it then we'd be seeing the m1 chip branded as something else in all kinds of different hardware and it would be just as fast or better and it would be available for windows and it would be available in 
Androids and we'd see A14 chips and A13 chips and Androids that are just as good as the iPhone. But we don't because Apple designed those chips. It's not just a matter of manufacturing, although that's a big piece of it. Um, let's see. That's a pyramid scheme a la Rick and Morty with extra steps. Um, but you can design a cryptocurrency so that it can be tracked. Some of them definitely are pyramid schemes like Bitcoin 2, which is just supposed to trick people. <laughs> Did someone? I've never heard of that. Did someone actually make Bitcoin 2? <laughs> Why don't they just call it Electric Boogaloo? That sounds wonderful. You better invest in Bitcoin too before it takes off. The fact that almost any entity can make their own definitely makes it confusing, I think. We haven't really had that with the U.S. dollar, you know. It's not like anybody could make their own dollar. It's like, eh, it's, you could, but no one will think about it. It's super legit. Buy some. You don't know, man. It could it could explode. And then you have the, the complication of Doge, which is like if enough people are convinced to troll a currency, it will actually become an actual currency. Like if enough people get in on it, if you get a big enough subreddit to all agree to buy Bitcoin too, then it will actually start holding value. Don't even get me started on Bitcoin 3. That's where it's really at. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. Um, let's see. I don't think personally I've heard that pitch from uh solving the money problem. I used to watch him, I stopped watching, he got a little too I know I look like a fanboy, but he got a little too fanboyish for me. Um The reason I don't think it's a good idea for Tesla power walls or, or Tesla cars or or whatever excuse me, or whatever to start mining Bitcoin is that yes. Tesla is in the energy business, I agree, and they generate a lot of electricity, but I don't think that any excess power or excess electricity should go into mining a non-physical thing. Just basically making GPUs work really, really hard so that a made-up number can go up. I think that that excess energy should go towards uh, actually you know, transportation of people or powering the grid, you know, having houses that have power walls so that they can power themselves when solar is not available, but also power each other so that electricity can be shared throughout the grid and our houses can be a lot smarter with, you know, this house is using more electricity, so route power that way. Instead of just saying, well, we have, ele we have excess electricity, let's just start running GPUs really hard. I don't think that Tesla should be focused on coming up with uses for excess energy because we are still in an energy crisis and we're still far, far away from having a surplus of energy. Um, so I, I would much rather the, the energy usage go down overall instead of coming up with reasons for the energy usage to be higher. Um, yeah, I think it'd be much better to just sell that excess power back into the grid so that the user can profit from it. Um Wouter says there are three Bitcoin versions. The original, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin SV. Oh, my God. Yeah, the thing is, if you want everybody to accept a currency, you really have to make it very simple and easy to understand, for the record. Like, you would literally have to explain all these altcoins and the three versions of Bitcoin, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, you'd have to explain all this to Grandma. Think of Grandma. You got to tell her how Bitcoin works and she's got to know what her digital wallet password is. I'm so excited for the decentralized power plant Tesla is building. Yeah, it's I'm excited for that kind of stuff. Um we need we need more renewable energy and we need houses to be better at maintaining energy. I'll also be very very interested in des Tesla building their own HVAC systems. Because our current AC system in our house sucks, and we've been talking about maybe upgrading it or swapping it out with something newer. Um, because it's a very basic, very inefficient wall AC that does not do a good job cooling down the house, and it's noisy, and it consumes a lot of power. So if Tesla started getting into the home HVAC business and maybe made something similar to a mini split with a heat pump and everything... 
it's possible they might just want to go with the type of, you know, central heating and cooling where it sits outside the house and it goes through our ventilation and everything. But I would be far more interested in Tesla getting into that than getting into the crypto mining. I also think you could combine those products, you know. Yeah, we'll drop the currency thing. Um, if if Tesla could combine power walls into HVAC so that you have an HVAC system that also is filled with lithium iron phosphate batteries, that would power the house when electricity is out or power the house when solar is not making enough and also be running all of your HVAC and just one product that attaches to the outside or sits off the outside of your house. Tesla, uh, Elon has said various times that they're very tempted or he's very interested in getting into the HVAC business. For those who are confused why, you know, Tesla makes solar panels in cars, why do they need to make an air conditioner? What's the thing? Well, keep in mind, Tesla's core mission is to accelerate our transition to sustainable energy. And our homes are the biggest suckers of electricity that we all are a big impact of. You know, it always makes me laugh. We're talking about MagSafe battery packs and all that. And I see a lot of people complaining that, oh, this is so hypocritical of Apple. You know, wireless charging is inefficient. It takes more energy to charge the phone. That's bad for the environment. It is such a minuscule amount of electricity that our phones use compared to what our HVAC systems use, especially as the world's getting hotter. We're having a heat wave across the United States right now, and it's probably not going to stop over the next decade. We're going to be using our AC systems a lot. And by far, it's not even your TV, even that big old thing. Not even as much as your refrigerator, although that's pretty high. Refrigerators are basically just mini HVAC systems. Those use a lot more power than your TV. And your phone is like a minuscule, microscopic difference to the grid, whether or not you charge it with a wire, whether or not you use MagSafe. It makes such little difference, even on a huge scale. ACs use the most amount of power that we all use every single day. Um, heating, cooling, all of that stuff, it's like... Of, of all the electricity humans consume, it's close to like, I think 60 or 70% of it just goes straight to HVAC. Just, just your air conditioning is what consumes the most amount of power. So Tesla wants to get into the HVAC business someday because they think they can make an HVAC system that consumes a lot less power than our current ones. And also they design really, really uh, effective... Um, air filtration systems in their vehicles, like bioweapon defense mode. They're putting that in the Model Y now. Before, they were just for the Model S and X. But basically, the HVAC system in those cars filters out toxins from the air so that you have like hospital-grade air quality within the vehicle. And Tesla's like, why don't we bring that to the house so that you have really clean, really pure air inside? Uh, because a lot of people don't realize that a lot of uh, diseases and, and a lot of deaths and sicknesses can be caused by bad air quality. So being able to smartly control the temperature of houses and, and filter out toxins from the outside, especially when there's tons of wildfires and stuff. A Tesla HVAC system, I think, would be a big deal. And that would be a huge potential market because tons of houses use electricity. And if you knew that you could buy a Tesla HVAC system and that it would lower your electricity bill and also make your air more pure um it's a it's a big deal that that would make a big impact and uh it would make our houses consume a lot le a lot less electricity than they do so anyway to bring this all back to the magsafe battery pack <laughs> don't worry about the environment uh just because you're wireless charging that's hardly the difference that's that's uh, wireless charging is not going to make or break energy use. It's such a small amount. You, running the microwave for like 10 seconds probably consumes way more power. If you if you open the fridge for like 10 seconds longer than it takes to pull something out of it, you've instantly consumed probably far more power than a wireless charger does in like six months versus a wired charge. We're talking about the difference here, um, not the total energy consumed. I'm just saying plugging in a device versus inductively charging it is such a small detail to get hung up on what about a company say tesla offering a deep discount uh or something for say powerwall america program a powerwall in every home 
Tesla, the problem is it's not the price, it's the production capacity. Tesla is trying to build power walls literally as fast as they can, but it's the same problem with the cars. They can't build the batteries fast enough. They are severely backordered, I, I read somewhere. I think it's like, hold on, power wall backorder. It was in the news recently. A friend of ours bought some like four months ago and they still haven't got them. Power up. Uh, power wall production oh it's also lagging due to chip shortage that makes sense um 80 the demand for the company's power wall is as high as eighty thousand units but tesla will not be able to produce even half of that this quarter um so already the way power walls are oh here i might as well just show you what i'm looking at this is what i was reading Musk said Tesla will only be able to make 30,000 to 35,000 of its home batteries in the best case scenario for the period ending in September. Um, but I know the batteries was a problem even before the chip shortage. So essentially what I'm saying is power walls are expensive now. Even if they were cheaper, uh, the problem would still the, the problem would still be they can't make enough of them. They, they can't make them fast enough. So they got to figure out 4680s first, but Anyway, um, I appreciate the Twitch Primes and the bits. I got to get going here. Um, but I am glad that we can have a couple more normal Twitch streams before we officially move off. Um, we're still, we're still going to be doing Twitch streams until the end of July for the record. So don't. I saw a few people deleting their accounts and unfollowing. I was like, well, get, you know, there's, there's still some content left. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. This is Rap Sheep here. See you all in the next one. Bye bye.